everyone, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing splendidly well on um day, Wednesday, as we call it, back home. Um, if you are new around here, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. Good day to you. It's great to have you back. If you are a returning Pommy and Ozzer, oi, oi, oh we are. If you do want to get involved in the channel, you can become a member. These legends did scrolling below. They let us do wonderful things like the giveaway, which all you've got to do is comment and you win one of your choice this week. Um, Timmy P did it last week. He won it. We've had numerous winners. As a James has won it. The list goes on. Um, but these legends also allowed us to sponsor Domiku at Carlton Football Club this year. So we're proud sponsors of him. So if you want to get involved in that, link is below. You can become a member of the channel and it does help us out. If you do like your sports prints, Pommy Sports Holman out, there is a shed load about to go up this week. Old players, current players, scenes and stuff. So check that out, pommysportsalmanac.com.au, which would be grouse. So what we're doing today is we had a request from Peter Harewood, and I thought it suits what I like to talk about, and that is tactics. And we're going to talk about how tactics are so important, and I think the least talked about part of the AFL. And I thought a really good example was a suggestion from him of the grand final and saw how Melbourne alleviated the doggies' threat. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the forward half. And this is really poignant for Carlton because, in my opinion, Carlton are one of the worst sides. And they are statistically at this facet of the game. But what did they do? Now, what we know about the Doggies, and if you watch that final, it was quite obvious. The Doggies are very, very good getting the ball out of their back half. They were one of the best Scott sides well, they were the best side at scoring from defensive transition. They were one of the best sides at getting it out of rebound 50 into marks. They are a side that prides themselves really on that ability to get it out of the back half and get the ball moving. We know that they like to attack the corridor as well. Now, what Melbourne did, and you'll see this on your screen now, is they, they attacked it in a different way. Now, one thing with pressure is people talk about tackles. Talk about your forward tackling. That's not so much the case. What they did really well was they took the space away, took away the short option first and foremost, but they just made the dogs have another touch. Now, the dogs are very efficient at getting it out. And it's not so much tackling, also just being in the eye line, taking away space, attacking the space. When we talk about forward pressure, people think it's as simple as having a tackle. It, it's bigger than that. It's about being where the ball is going to be. There was a great, um, I watched a great interview a couple of weeks ago um, with a UFC fighter talking about that the art of box, um, the art of striking isn't hitting your opponent. It's hitting where he's going to be because obviously no one's a stationary target. It's the same with the ball. The ball isn't going to stay still and it isn't going to go in a methodical pattern. It's going to be reactive. So what you've got to do is react to them changes. And if you watch the doggies, what they're very good at doing is, and we talk about this all the time with Carlton, is running towards the ball, creating options, creating options for the ball carrier to get rid of that ball and ultimately be in a better space. And that's something that the, the Demons did incredibly, incredibly well. They took away the easy option. And one thing that they did is they left the wing side open. They took away the corridor. They know that the doggies like to attack that. So when they were approaching their back pocket, instead of approaching him face on, they'd approach from the corridor area. The corridor would be back to me. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving you that option. I'm taking you where I want you to be. I'm trying to protect it. And that again comes into account when we talk about corridor defense. It's not as simple as flooding your corridor. Corridor defence, and the art of defence starts really in your attacking phases. That is a really good thing. And that is what the Demons did, particularly in the second half, incredibly well. Making them have that extra touch, making them go to the wider side of the ground, taking away their strengths, and then ultimately playing to where they wanted to do. And that leads us on to the second. Stoppages and their work around the centre clearances. It is no surprise when you look at them, at the Demons, at the Doggies, is they're one of the best sides in the competition. Well, they were the best at stoppage scoring. They were phenomenal. Um, the clearance ability was really good as well. 
this was really a case of two elite midfields going at it. Now, you saw in the first half, it was kind of stymied. Everyone played an extra behind the ball. They were fearful of the run. They were fearful of their ability to hit targets. And what changed in this around stoppages was creating the outlet. Now, one thing that Melbourne did is Luke Jackson took over the sole rook duties and they moved Gorn forward. Now, we'll talk a bit more about Gorn there, but it created the outlet for them front and centre first and foremost in the forward 50. They had that extra body. But what they did as well, which was quite, quite, I would say, a dangerous roll of the dice, is they flooded the backside of all contests in stoppages, which allowed them to protect that run, but also be at the fall of the ball and effectively create another stoppage. And you saw that what their rooks did was just was, was just tap it down in front of them. Just tap it down in front of them and at the fall of the ball be there. Viney was exceptional in this role for them. He was really understated. Another understated man in this, in this technique as well was they brought the legend that is, and no one talks about him really in this, but they brought Neil Bullen around the ball as well. And what he was doing there was really just stopping freedom, stopping freedom. It was a really exciting time to be watching the game. And it's about being reactive, going from behind the ball to the front of the ball. And then it allows you, when you do create that turnover, to have runners. And you saw it. It was run, run, run. You saw some wonderful goals from the centre clearance as well, where there was a few little one-twos. They worked their way into traffic. And then eventually what happens is that one behind the ball comes that extra in front of the ball to give them that extra run as well around the centre and they took away that corridor very quickly with that defensive set. It was hard for the doggies to go through the corridor again. And that is really important. Now, the third one we're going to talk about, and we touched on it, is Maxi Gorn. It was, it was kind of sensational to think that Max Gorn, an elite level Ruckman, would, would really not be in the Ruck. But they brought him forward. And what was wonderful about this, and when we watch this game back, and I implore you to watch it, is it created chaos for them. You saw Eastern Wood, Keith and Cordy struggle with that option because they were instantly now not only worried about not not worried about Ben Brown, not worried about Tom McDonald, but playing gone in the less role that we saw in the season, which was in the back half to play him forward created that other outlet. It drew players out of position. And we talk about this a lot at Carlton with Harry. People are drawn to him. This is how you use that to your strength. Because you found that once he got his hands on the pill a few times, naturally, Cordy and Keith in particular, their eyes were averted. Even though they were on their man, they saw him peel off and they felt obliged to do it, which then creates space in around the back for Fritz particularly to really exploit and you saw the dummy one runs that Gorn made. And unfortunately, there isn't a stat for this. But it is incredible the amount of times you go back and watch that to see what they did. To see them dummy runs be used and really create it. And then when you mix that, them dummy runs, with the first thing we talked about, the forward pressure, it creates proper chaos. It creates proper chaos because when they did alleviate that gone threat, what you found was suddenly they had to worry about the ball getting out and they were confined to their back half and they suddenly changed from the doggy short, sharp, quick method to having to go long. And that was heavily influenced by Maxi Gorn. And that is something that, you know, really, when you look at a Carlton football club with their forward line makeup, it's something that they really need to look at. It's okay leading for the ball, but also using a dummy lead and knowing that that fear. And when you watch Harry play, players are naturally going to follow him. They know he's dangerous. They know he's a very good contested mark as well. So it instantly adds on to that, that they're like, oh, gosh, he can take a mark on one person. I need to go and help, which then is about lowering the eyes. And that's what Melbourne did really well. You saw a few times track, get the ball, and he sees the dummy run. And he blazes one over Gorn into Fritz. Go, blazes one to Ben Brown. He looks for them options. And you watch Melbourne, particularly in that forward half, the amount of players that run towards the ball carrier. We say this all the time. 
It's about creating that option. They were hungry for the ball. They were hungry to get involved. And it creates them options. And you saw that the doggies, in the end, had to play very defensive, even though they needed scores. And as with Carlton, pressure leads to more goals. The more you spend in your back half, it's only a matter of time before that doll swings open. Well, there it is. That, that was the little bits of previews there that we've done of the Melbourne game. How do we integrate that into Carlton? Let me know in the comments. This is some These three areas for me, I would say, are Carlton's biggest negatives in our team. And we've got a template there of a side of how to do it. Let, let me know in the comments. We'll have a discussion. Till next time, I'll be out.